So let's get stuck into the training. Here's what you're gonna learn in this training. We're gonna teach, I'm gonna teach you rather, how to create likable, clickable, stackable, shareable content. I say that three times fast. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to create a bond that has complete strangers referring you, even though they may have never ever bought from you. Uh, we're also gonna provide massive value while still making sales. So I guess a lot of people have a frustration around, am I giving too much away? So I'm gonna teach you a strategy that gives heaps and heaps of value. However, you could still make sales at the same time. I'm gonna teach you how to close more sales with ease using content marketing. Content marketing, guys, is exactly where this is at, okay? Why is this important for you to know now? Well. I guess from my perspective, the way I see it is that most people are simply doing this dead wrong. Market is saturated at the moment. I even had an email earlier from one of the attendees saying, hey, listen, everyone seems to be saying the same thing, so how do I stand out? Which is a great question. And again, if you've got questions like that and you want, to, want me to answer them, uh, just hold them off to the end, write them down, so then I know exactly um, you know, I can make some time for you rather and, and you know exactly what to ask. You don't re you remember, need to remember what it is you wanted to ask, yeah? Okay, so there's market saturation. Monotony has made people immune to content information and that's even if it's really, really useful stuff, okay? So conversions are becoming harder and costs are rising, ad costs are rising, rising. for those of you who are, um, using fa paid Facebook ads, you will notice that your cost per click or your client acquisition is starting to go up. Is this making sense? Again, just so I know that you guys are around, so I know that you guys are, are with me because I can't see you, obviously. You can see my screen, but I can't see you. So just hit me up in the chat and let me know that everything's going okay. Just put your hands up or uh, comment and say, all good, ready to rock and roll. That way I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, I can see you there. I just can't see whether, know rather whether you're uh, in tune with me, yeah? All right, I need, I need to know. As you can already tell, I'm very hard and fast when it comes to uh, my training. I'm also like not hypey or anything like that. And it's fairly sort of relaxed in a sense as, as you know, uh, counterintuitive as that sounds. So I'm kind of going to roll with this like you were sitting right in front of me as a client, yeah? Okay, here we go. Is this for you? Well, if you're post engagement levels on social media, embarrassing low levels, then this is definitely for you. If you waste a lot of precious time every day thinking about like what content to create and, and you just want to jumpstart, then this is definitely, definitely for you. Can't even get my words out. Okay, uh, if you want to be positioned as a celebrity authority in your marketplace, this is for you. If you want to deliver massive value and make a huge impact and an income, this is definitely for you. Here's a few house rules. Um, this is not a one piece of viral content you've done type stuff. There is a load of work to be done here and those who uh, you know, do the work get paid, yeah? So the fortune favors the brave. This is not for inauthentic people looking for a quick buck without doing any work, yeah? And please note that, again, disclaimer, disclaimer, my results aren't typical, okay? All right, so I've got a bit of an advantage. I know you might be thinking that it's, fine for you, you do this all the time. Yeah, but you know what, I do have several years in the industry and I'll tell you a little bit about my story in a second. Um, but I've been not only developing content for myself, but developing content for um, my hundreds of clients, right? And I also have a name in the industry, so I get that, yeah? All right, but the thing is, I had to start somewhere, okay? So if those of you, for those of you who don't know who I am and what I do, in another life, I was a real estate agent and I was four weeks from closing the doors, okay? I had to do something. Uh, other than like cut costs dramatically, I had to still brand myself. So I chose social media as the thing that I thought I could do to keep my name in the industry going, a way that I can market myself and a way that I could do it in such a way that actually didn't cost any money because remember, I'm four weeks away from going broke. I needed to cut costs fast. So I had to think on my feet and do something. So I chose social media. Back then, I had Facebook. We had YouTube videos. Didn't have any live video. This is like 2012 or something like that. But this is my fail compilation, okay? So I started out in real estate. I created some really intellectual statistical information that would stun my audience with my superior intelligence. 
and I failed. All right, no one wanted to know about all the stats and the facts and all that kind of stuff about the marketplace. It just bored them to tears. So epic fail there. I thought it had a little bit of humor, you know, with uh, some cartoon memes. So again, this is 2011, you know, to show my other side and uh, that failed. So people just didn't want to see any of that kind of stuff. And to be honest, when I look back now, it's like so lame. It's just, yeah, embarrassing. I'm already got my hands in my head thinking about how bad it was. Uh, I created my first info product, which I advertised online, but delivered in the mail. All right. So didn't have any like downloadable stuff at that point, although later on I created eBooks and, and stuff like that. So uh, I did that, but it failed. You know, I had a lot of people sort of thinking about doing something, but when I sent it in um, the, what do you call it? The, uh, the chat, no, sorry, the chat, the, um, the mail, then, you know, like it was kind of like, Hey, uh, you know, no one wanted to post this thing out and all that kind of stuff. It cost me an absolute fortune. Anyway, long story short, it absolutely failed. Now what? Okay, so option one, uh, I could give up on social media and go back to traditional marketing, which was like so expensive back then, still is today. Option two, I could figure out how to create an influence and monetize social media in a non-douchey way. Okay, that's a, a technical term for sales, yeah? So the game changed the decision. I decided to persist, right? Others were crushing it, so there must be a way of doing it right using social media, and particularly automated marketing. So I ignored my competitors. Okay, the strategies that they were using to me were like just pushy, fake, unnatural, scripted, and they just looked like used car salesmen. So remember, you know, I'm trying to be like known, liked, and trusted in a profession that is, you know, for want of a better word, unknown, unknown, unliked, and untrusted, right? So it was kind of like, uh, yeah, this was uh, pushing a barrel uphill. All right. So what I did was I consistently promoted my message, attracting inbound leads who eventually turned into paying clients, right? When my competitors were just using old school sales tactics, they were kind of doing the letterbox drops and they were doing the free market appraisals and all that kind of stuff. If you know about real estate, you would have seen all that before. So now I've just changed all of that over to my uh, digital media marketing in my coaching business. So today, I've created thousands of posts, produced over 300 videos, ran tons of workshops in the last four or five years, and I've reached tens of thousands of people per week through my content marketing, not to mention, I'm making a full-time income doing what I love, which is so cool. So you're in the right place, guys. Uh, not only that, I use these same methods to, uh, with my clients. We generate between six and seven figures with some of them. Now, I don't take all that money. That's their money, not mine. Um, but in short, this stuff works. Okay, so why should you do this? Well, you can't just post a few times a week anymore and that's it. Okay, I know you might be thinking my market's different and there's not a lot of content to share. That is a belief that is going to inhibit and it's not true. Um, can you just create like an ad and like there's no need to mess around with content? Well, no, that's all dead wrong. You can't do that anymore. The solution lies in content marketing. And this is what your competitors are not doing, okay? What your competitors are do, still doing is they're marketing like it's 1989, going in for the sale, right, using backyard tactics. But in the wake of their douchey mistakes, this is your enormous opportunity. Are you with me? All right, there's a better way that you can make sales, that you can look way cooler at the same time. So I want you to check out these stats. I'm not trying to brag here. This is a screen dump that I took a couple of weeks ago, about a week or so ago. Um, so what's that? 22nd of December to the 16th of January. So uh, these are the stats so far. Okay, my actions on the page, like you can see, it's up 450%. The page views are up 121%. But I want to drag your attention down to post reach and post engagements. So I am currently, this number has lowered, right? It's around 350,000 right now, but I was reaching at that time 362,510 people and my engagement is 158,147. Now, 
these figures are all up 163%, 350%. You can see with video views up 380%. But here's the thing. The solution was the content marketing because you can go over to my Facebook page right now and you can see that I don't have 360,000 fans. I don't even have 150,000 fans or 100,000 or 50,000 or 20,000, okay? I've got a smidge over 6,000 fans, which to some of you might be a lot and to some of you, you may have tons more fans than what I do. But why am I reaching 350,000 people per month through my content marketing? So it comes with this concept and I call it the million and fifty thousand dollar concept. So again, as you know, in a previous life, I was a real estate agent and uh, I was entrusted in selling these beachfront apartments. Now, it was a great deal at the time and it, this particular property can... Um, was on the market and it was on the market for like 12 months with another real estate agent. And so the thing that was happening was, is that nothing was selling. I'm like, I'm talking beachfront. So these sales agents were kind of always crunching the owner on price and obviously trying to crunch the buyer. Now I know crunch sounds like a really, really bad word, but they were kind of pushing the buyer to uh, make an offer and they were pushing the owner to lower the price. So when I got in there, I thought this was an amazing opportunity and I was stunned to realize just exactly what went into this particular complex. So the owner was telling me, Adrian, this is a two level basement car park. And the thing is, is that because we are less than 500 meters from the beach, this is underwater. So what we had to do is we had to put up these shear walls when we were uh, excavating so we could um, stop the water from coming through. And then we blasted this stuff, whatever it was called, against the wall, against the dirt so we could hold the water in. And then what we did was we added 125 screw piles, which went 12 meters into the ground so we could then allow the lay the foundation. And so now the foundation is absolutely solid, right? So I'm blowing out. It's like in this basement, there is 4,000 cubic meters of concrete. And I'm like, I can't believe it. This is like, I didn't realize so much effort went into this particular building. I'm just like normally looking at beautiful kitchens and nice views, but I couldn't believe it. So here's the thing. When buyers would come around, every other agent would take them through the apartments and say, look at the view and then this is the, the area and all this kind of stuff and just say, here's the kitchen and here's the bathroom. And it's like, it's almost like you're insulting the buyer with their, their intelligence because you're like, yeah, I've seen a bathroom before and I've seen a, uh, you know, a kitchen, right? I don't need to know that. However, when I was going in there and I did this kind of like, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just so fascinated about the detail that I wanted to share all this information. So I would go into the basement first and go, hey, before we go to the unit, Let's go out of the basement, okay? Because when I check out the basement, it's two level. I take them through how many square meters or cubic meters of concrete there was, how many screw piles there were, what well, the shear walls and the excavation, the effort that's gone into building. So this thing is solid and it's never going to go anywhere in a million years because of the effort that the builder has gone through. And this particular buyer turned around and said, you know what? We've been looking at a lot of property and no one has ever explained the concept of how this property is put together, you are so knowledgeable. Anyway, long story short, as you can probably tell, these guys went to, I think, the third floor, the fourth floor, and they paid a million and fifty thousand for this near ocean front property. So what's the difference? What's the lesson that I learned in all of this? Well, when people feel like that you know your knowledge, when they feel like you are helping them, when they feel like you're going the extra mile and you're, you're sort of, you're not selling the thing, you're kind of just teaching them about, you know, about it, okay? And then when they're comfortable, they make the decision for themselves. And this is complete opposite to what most people do. You're, you're, we're told to sell features and benefits, okay? And to me, where the concept of content marketing, when I apply this, this uh, lesson, it is in total opposite of what most people are doing. It may be you and it's definitely your competition, okay? So here's how you do it online. 
The method is RCTP. Now I'm going to explain this obviously, right? So if you guys don't have a pen and pad right now, then please go and get one, right? If you guys, uh, if you can hear me okay, just put your hands up and say, yes, I can hear you. Um, I've already had a message to say, I can't hear, I can't get in the chat. So apologize about that. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Linda's already opened up the Q&A and said, I'm here. So that's fantastic. All right. So perfect at least at least I know some of you are around which is amazing all right I'm not just talking to myself okay get out your pen and your pad again I'm inviting you here so I can teach you I want to impress you with my knowledge but not only that I want you to walk away from this webinar unlike any other webinar who just rave on about themselves and how good they are and they don't teach you squat about the thing that you signed up for okay so I want to teach you the thing all right here we go RCTP, writing it down. Now, this is what that stands for. Research, the R is for research, C is create, T is test, and P is promote. Now, I'm gonna go through each one of these steps with you, okay? So I'm gonna run through this pretty fast because there's a lot to get through, so you gotta listen fast, yeah? Here we go. Research, what do your customers want, all right? What are their main frustrations now I want you to start writing this down when you think about your particular customer if you've got questions guys then leave them to the end but write them down so you, un you remember what to ask me okay so first step is the research what do your customers want now this could be a product, a program, it could be a service, but we're talking about content marketing here. So we need to put it into context as to what we are going to deliver to them, what they need to know, okay? All right, what are their main frustrations? If you don't know this, go to Google and search it. If you don't know this, go to your past customers and ask them, go to Facebook and, and create a poll and please get some information, do some intel. It's gonna serve you forever and a day. Okay. What do they need? What do you need to say to demonstrate you can help them? Now, there's a caveat here because I'm going to teach you in a little bit that if you give them the holy grail, most of your customers are not going to be ready for that. You need to understand and ascertain in your own mind what do you need to say. See, I've highlighted need to say to demonstrate that you can help them. Okay, so this is like the first part of your content marketing plan. Next. Create, obviously, you've got to create your content. Now, remember, your content is not about you, it's about them, all right? So we need to make sure that you put yourself in a frame of mind, and this is more or less, I guess, like, how you see it. As soon as you start to create a, a content piece, whether it be a video, whether it be a blog or whatever it is, and you start to think about your customer, your, how is it going to serve them the most? Your writing, your style, your video, the way you deliver starts to change. When you think about it, what can I get them to buy from me? Then you start to become that 1980 douchebag salesperson. Okay. So when you change your paradigm to about them, not you, this is where the magic happens and this is where your competitors go wrong. They just go in for the kill. Okay, have you ever heard of the saying, sell to others how you would like to be sold to? Okay, all right, so you don't enjoy anyone else waffling on about themselves, okay? So don't start to waffle too much about you, but I can teach you a way in this strategy on how to kind of tell your story but without doing it in a douchebag way. Okay, the good news is your competitors are just like you. Sorry, your customers are just like you, all right? So uh, let's give you another example. I always like using going into a clothing store. You go into a clothing store and as soon as you walk in, the salesperson, man or woman, whatever it is, uh, says, hey, what are you looking for? And you're like, I'm just looking, you know, or hey, what, do you, what can I get you? You know, what do you want? Like that sort of thing. And you go, I'm just looking. All right, so they go, no problems, you know, and if they're still hanging around you saying, what are you looking for and all that kind of stuff, you're like, oh, let's just go, you know, even if they've got the thing that you want to buy, you're out of there. Making sense so far? But what if you walked into the uh, shop and the salesperson there just acknowledged you and said, how's it going? You go, good, thanks. Like, that's a really good response. All right, great. Um, hey, listen, I'm over here. So whenever you're ready and you need me, just sing out because uh, I'm just going to be stacking these jeans or whatever it is. All right. So now we're starting a bit of a dog, but your, your walls are now coming down because you're like, oh, finally, they're not going to be on under me like a fly on you know what so they're kind of like just 
you know, nice and cool and easy. So if you are like that, when other people are pushy and creepy onto you, then, and it, and it, deters you straight away what do you think your customers are going to do they're going to be exactly the same this is where your competitors go wrong okay next test this is a simple thing and the thing that i love about facebook is because when you're using ads for example or you're putting up a post if you get little to no engagement then it's kind of like you know uh maybe this is not working right or if you're promoting it and the cost of the lead or the view that's the second indicator right is not really going right, you can just delete it and start again. So let me run you through this process. If the message is resonating, one of the indicators will be the engagement. Okay, so this is clicks, likes, comments, etc., video views, all that kind of stuff, yeah? All right, the second one is the indicator that will be the cost of the lead. So typically, if your lead costs are going down per click, well, then you're kind of hitting a really nice mark, right? But if they're going up or they're increasing, depending on your product or program or service that you're promoting, it could blow out your budget. And so if you're selling a $10 product and it's costing you $18 per click, well, then obviously you're going to go broke pretty quick, yeah? So these are the indicators. The solution is, is that if the content isn't resonating, then the indicator will be crickets. And that's not crickets as in like the game cricket, it's the crickets as in like you'll hear nothing, okay? All right, so that's a really good indication. And the thing is, is that if you spent $5 or $10 or $20 to find that out, well then you're not gonna go broke over $20, yeah? So you switch it off, start again. The next thing to do, go back to step one, research, start all over again. The final step in this sequence is to promote. So once you hit the mark with your content, it's time to promote your message. This is where we build cold traffic into warm traffic and eventually sales. Now, there's a way to do this, and I teach this uh, in my courses. So uh, it's not something for this particular training, but I'll go into it a little bit later. All right, are you ready for the three-step formula? Again, uh, put your hand up if you are ready. If I'm going too fast, you just have to listen faster, yeah? I'm gonna give you the three-step formula for creating content. You ready? Yes, hands are up, good. All right, here we go. Nice, 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 nice. I can see all the hands going up, this is beautiful. All right, here we go. Step one, you gotta write down your, what your ideal customer's problem is right now or their pain point, okay? So remember before when I said like, you gotta find out what you need to tell them in order to help them right now or demonstrate you can help them. So your first step is when you're thinking about your customer and you're putting yourself in your customer's shoes, write down what your ideal customer's current problem or pain point is right now. Okay, what do they want to escape from? What is their pain point? What can you really help them with right now? What's the problem? Now, remember, the solution is not the holy grail. The solution is the next step. Here we go. Step two, what story, metaphor, or process, these are key words, can you tell that also solves the problem? So if you haven't guessed it already, stories, metaphors, and processes are the best way to wrap your offers up in content, okay? Because this is how people get to know you, like you, trust you, and they don't seem, feel like you're just going to sell them something, all right? So it's not a tactical way. It's not something that's manipulative. It's just the right thing to do. If you can demonstrate to someone that you're very helpful, that you're knowledgeable, and that you can relate to them, then you'll have a customer for life. And this is something that in, when done in a very authentic way, which I'm totally all for, is not to manipulate anyone, then it just, all it does is just uh, a self-perpetuating thing like it's kind of like it just produces more goodwill more sales more revenue more referrals because even if someone's listening to you or watching you and they're not ready for your solution right now they might tag someone else in there and go hey sally or hey trent this might be for you so what do you think about this and all of a sudden it starts the conversation and facebook is all about meaningful conversations this is going to skyrocket your engagement Step three, what's the first step? Not the thing that they buy, the first step to solving their problem, okay? What can you help them with? This is otherwise known as a CTA or call to action. 
So I'll give you a couple of examples of a first step. Well, like you're attending now, a first step could be a webinar. A first step could be an ebook. A first step could be a phone call. A first step could be a video, right? So it's not, you, ha you don't have to sell. You don't have to go for the one night stand because it's very difficult to land a customer who's gravitated so much to the point where they're ready for your thing right now. Unless it's things like toilet paper or soap or, or, you know things that they need right this minute like I imagine with most of you that are online because I've you know done a little bit of recon work you know there's a lot of products there's a lot of services right so this is how you really start to turn the tide right this is where your competitors will fall off because they just can't do this they can't get their head around this they want the sales this is a long-term thing so what's the first step not the thing that they buy, the first step to solving their problem that you can help them with, right? Otherwise known as a CTA, remember that word or acronym, call to action. All right, so you wanna see how this can apply to your content, okay? Again, raise your hands, let me know that's going on. If you wanna uh, hit me up in the Q&A, then like, just let me know, like, is this going good? Again, I can't see you guys, okay? I need some feedback so I know what's going on. I'm getting like excited if you haven't talked can tell already by my voice, but this is just my thing, right? So anyway, here we go. This method can apply to like blog posts, long form ads, or short form copy, or uh, pre-recorded videos. And right now, as far as I'm concerned, it's killing it with live video. Is this making sense so far? So this is what you do next, okay. In order to start to create this content, you need to come up with as many topics as possible around this problem. So your customer has a pain point or has a problem that they are facing right now. They could have a number of pain points or a number of problems. Now, your job as a marketer, and I want to get your headspace into becoming a marketer, this is like you need to become a marketer, have a marketer's mindset in business today. It's no longer that you can delegate. You can't go off to yellow pages or to the paper and say, you do my thing. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. You need to think of yourself as a marketer. So now you need to come up with as many topics as possible that explain that certain situation and then give the first steps to get them out of that problem. All right. Come up with as many angles on each of those topics, okay? So not just the topics themselves, but come up with as many angles from those topics. So this way, it's kind of like when people say to me, Adrian, I just, I get stuck with the ideas. I'm like, hang on a second. You guys have got so much content, it's not funny. And if you want to know the best way to come up with content, just look at your customers, your clients, your experiences. Just look at the, the top 10 or 15 or 20 things that you say every day anyway. You're probably answering the same 15 questions every single day of your working life. Come up with as many topics as those and then start to diversify with as many angles on each of those topics. All right, now apply this method across all of your social channels. So for me personally, I'm kind of pretty hard on uh, Facebook. It's something that just generates heaps and heaps of uh, goodwill for me, tons of business. I like all the other platforms, but I made a decision about six months ago to delete all the apps off my phone. And uh, since then, I haven't really played too much. Instagram I like because Facebook owns it. Um, so anything else, I don't do it. But if you're all over Snapchat or whatever, then do this on Snapchat. If you're all over LinkedIn, do this on LinkedIn. Uh, if you like Facebook like me, then do it on Facebook, okay? Uh, if you can't tell already, I, I would... I would safely assume that your local competitors, I'm not talking about like really big, big name gurus or anything like that. Your local competitors, one, the, the stats back it up to no end that they are not doing any of this. Um, they're not promoting their, their uh, services in such a way. They're not even paying for ads. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of them who don't even have a Facebook page. So if you're here and you've got a Facebook page, well then, you're already miles in front of a lot of your, uh, custom, your, your competition anyway, right? But your competitors aren't doing any of this. All right. You, I just said this. Your competition, they won't do this. It's too much work. And this is how you win. 
when you're ready to put in this work, so if you're thinking right now, man, this sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, of course, anything that you do that's strange to you seems like it's overwhelming. But you know what? Walking to you was overwhelming at some point. Driving a car to you was overwhelming at some point. So this is just another thing that you need to get over simply because the writing is on the wall, guys. Every five years, someone says, if you're not on social media in the next five years, you're going to go out of business. I believe that this next five years is critical. Why? If you haven't noticed already, the heat is on, man, right? There are a lot of people getting into this space and especially big businesses. And big businesses have got big budgets. And when they've got big budgets, they can throw a ton of cash around and it leaves small businesses uh, really like, hanging on to scraps. So we need to make a dent now. This is where you can create the relationships that they come. Is this making sense? All right, if you've got any questions, again, write them down so I can answer them at the end. All right, are you ready for the one killer strategy that will enable you to never run out of content again? Uh, dramatic pause. Okay, you ready? All right, this is how to never ever run out of content again. Repost your content every four to six weeks. So don't tell anyone that I told you this, okay? But if you are a fan of my page, if you're not, you should be. But if you're a fan of my page, then you will know that I'm just mad about making people feel good. I'm mad about quotes. I'm mad about videos, all that kind of stuff. But if you've been following me for a while, you'll kind of see there's a little bit of repetition. I do this on purpose. One reason is, is that I can't guarantee that my fans are there all of the time. I know that the stats tell me that 30% of my fan base are online at any one time. So that means that out of 6,000 fans, there's a lot of people who aren't there. So I need to continually come up with content. So uh, what I do is, is I come up with a ton of content and I've got like three or 4,000 quotes on my page. I've got you know, a couple hundred videos, all that kind of stuff. But um, recently, for example, I traveled overseas for three months with my family. So I was creating content as I was going. I was sort of blogging my way through, you know, Europe as cool as that sounds. I was like, man, hectic as. But uh, at the same time, I had to come up with content so I could continue to reach my fans and continue to provide value. So what do I do? Every four to six weeks, repost the content because there's new fans at that time. They haven't seen what I did four to six weeks ago. And most people, because we live in this ADD world, they don't even know what I posted yesterday <laughs> regardless of whether I posted four to six weeks. So I know I laugh and it sounds bad, but the thing is, this is going to save you so much time. If you go back through your old content now, you can then repost that for the next four to six weeks and voila you've got another two months worth of content that you can then keep rehashing through your uh, social media feed right now of course the idea is to keep it evergreen all that kind of stuff but this is the one killer strategy that your competitors don't know they're always coming up with new content and when they can't come up with new content guess what they do they do nothing all right guys i want to thank you for your time today and if you've got any questions ask me now